and welcome to this week's lecture. So this week, chapter four in the text, you should have read that already or read it along with these slides. But we're discussing the techniques that we use to evaluate a company's internal situation. So last week was uh, largely about the external situation. Now we're going to look internally, including the collection of resources and capabilities uh, and activities that you can do along the way to assess uh, your value in the value chain. So this internal analysis is going to enable managers then to determine whether the strategy is likely to be a good fit and to give you a competitive edge over uh, other companies, rivals, right? And so combining this internal this week with the external analysis, now we're able to facilitate that understanding of how to reposition your organization to take advantage of new opportunities and to thwart uh, competing threats. So these are our objectives for this uh, week. You can pause and review those. Um, and so uh, the answers to these five questions on the slide, and I'm not sure why it's uh, showing. Let me. Uh, okay, the answers to these five questions on the slide, these really are going to complete your understanding of the company's overall situation and uh, and your company's position, right? To put you in a good place, right? Is it a good strategy fit uh, required by the three tests of a winning strategy? So how well is the firm strategy working? make that assessment. What is the firm's competitively important resources, right? Maybe your limited resources, for example. Are the firm's cost structure and customer value proposition competitive? Because remember, you have to have profit in order to be successful, not just a great strategy. And is the firm competitively stronger or weaker than its key rivals? And finally, what strategic strategic issues or problems, merit, front burner, managerial attention. All good questions to ask when evaluating your internal situation. So we're going to look at those now. Question one, how well is the firm strategy working, right? The strategy, strategic success in a firm's present competitive approach requires us asking some questions, right? Has the firm been successful? Uh, in terms of new customers or market position, etc. Has the firm gained a sustainable competitive advantage based on low product costs or better uh, product offerings, etc.? Is the firm appropriately concentrating its resources or are resources being diverted, right? There's this broad spectrum of customers uh, possibly or possibly just a narrow niche market. Where are you focused on? Uh, what about the firm's functional strategic effort like R&D, marketing, finance, human resources, IT, etc.? Uh, IT can make a big difference, right? This is where Kmart lost the battle in the supply chain with Walmart. Otherwise, they were head to head in so many other categories. And then finally, has the firm been successful in its efforts to establish alliances with other enter enterprises? So persistent shortfalls in meeting performance targets and weak marketplace performance uh, relative to your peers in the, in the industry, these are reliable warning signs that the firm has a weak strategy and is going to suffer from poor strategy execution uh, or uh, both. Okay. So the uh, next slide then, we look here now at specific indicators of how well your strategy is working. And the number of them are listed on this slide. It's a pretty uh, simple uh, read. You could pause and do that. So the strategic man management principle to apply, though, is that sluggish financial performance and second-rate market accomplishments, right, in market share or other things, these almost always signal a very weak strategy, weak execution, or both along the way. Not good signs overall. So uh, the next question of those five uh, our reference what the company's 
competitively important resources and capabilities are. So a firm's resources and capabilities are those competitive assets which determine whether your competitive power in the marketplace can be applied. Uh, and will it put you in a strong position or are you likely to end up in a disappointing position? So companies with a lower than expected competitive set of assets nearly always are relegated to some trailing position. And so um, uh, this is something that you would want to address uh, up front and early on in your company's effort. So the core concept is this about resources and capabilities. A resource is a competitive asset that is owned or controlled by a firm. A capability, sometimes called a competence, is the capacity of your organization to perform some internal activity in a very competitive way throughout the life cycle of the product and its whole deployment, right? So now your firm's resources and capabilities, they represent those competitive assets that are either detriments of your competitiveness or apply your ability to succeed in the marketplace, right? And so analyzing these become a powerful tool for sizing up your organization and your assets and determining how sustainable is the competitive advantage that you think you have over your rivals in the marketplace. So um, organizational capabilities really are more complex than resources. We know that. Indeed, they're, they're built up through the use of resources and they draw on some combination of the firm's resources as they're exercised, right? So there are several ways to identify your organization's capabilities. One is make a complete listing of the resources that your firm has and consider whether um, uh, and to what extent you uh, want to use them in these uh, endeavors. The second approach is a functional approach, right? And here you're going to identify capabilities related to stovepiped functions, right? That are going to draw on a limited number of resources within that stovepipe uh, involving a single department or an organizational unit or a business unit, right? Sometimes you may need some cross-functional capabilities, but largely it's within a function. And they spring from effective collaboration among people uh, of different types of expertise in the business. So in your uh, book, we have table 4.1. And this lists the common types of tangible resources that a company may possess, things you would want to consider along the way. Now the next uh, slide, also from the book, uh, continues uh, that list to include human assets, uh, brand and image, reputation, relationships, and company culture along the way. So uh, the competitive power of a resource or capability is measured by how many of four basic tests it can pass, right? And so the uh, these tests are referred to as VRIN, V-R-I-N, VRIN tests, for sustainable competitive advantage. This is really a shorthand to remember uh, what they stand for. Valuable, rare, Im uh, inimitable, and non-substitutable. So the first two tests, valuable and rare, determine whether the resources uh, or the company can support this competitive advantage. And the last two, uh, inimitable and non-substitutable, um, the last two, they determine whether your competitive advantage can be sustained. So resources can contribute to a sustainable competitive advantage only when resources, re a resource substitutes aren't on the horizon, right? That's when resources contribute to a sustainable competitive advantage. Important point. So the core concept is that Viren tests for sustainable competitive advantage. Uh, what most 
What is most telling about a company's aggregation of resources is how powerful they are in the marketplace. So a competitive uh, power of a resource or capability is measured by how many of those four tests, those Vern tests, uh, for uh, sustainable competitive advantage it can pass, right? So the core concept, again, being that social complexity and uh, causal ambiguity come into play. Social complexity and causal ambiguity are two factors that are going to inhibit the ability of rivals to imitate what you're doing with your most valuable resources and capabilities. So causal amb ambiguity, it makes it very hard to figure out uh, how a complex resource contributes to the competitive advantage that you've achieved. And therefore, exactly what they should imitate makes it very challenging. So uh, organizational capabilities are more complex entities than just resources, right? Indeed. Uh, and they are built up through the use of resources and draw on some combination of the firm's resources as you exercise them. So you want to bundle resources is the point. And so there are two approaches to identifying the firm's capabilities, right? Again, you have this complete listing uh, that's accumulated and it considers whether or to what extent the actual organization has built up these related capabilities. And then there's the functional approach, again, which I've already uh, talked about along the way. So uh, rivals that are initially unable to replicate a key resource may develop better and better substitutes over time. Resources and capabilities can uh, de uh, depreciate like any other asset if they are managed with uh, some sort of neglect along the way. And so uh, disruptive changes in technology or customer preferences or distribution channels or other competitive factors, these are things that can destroy the value of your key strategic assets, these resources that we've been talking about. And so rivals are initially unable to replicate what you're doing because they're unable to replicate key resources, right? But as a result of that, they may develop better and better substitutes over time. And so resources and capabilities can uh, depreciate like any other asset. Again, we want to manage them uh, well to avoid being uh, suffering from disruptive changes. So companies that know the importance of recalibrating continually and upgrading their most valuable resources and capabilities. Ensure that these activities are done on a continuous basis. You never take a pause from this. So by incorporating activities into their routine management efforts day to day, these companies are going to gain the experience necessary to be able to do them well, to be able to do them consistently. And at that point, their ability to freshen and renew their competitive assets becomes a capability in itself. That is what we call a dynamic capability. And so next we ask, is the company able to seize market opportunities and nullify those external threats, right? And so we, we talked about last week's SWOT in the last couple weeks. SWOT can help explain a, why a strategy is working well or why it's not working uh, by taking a closer look at your strengths in relation to your weaknesses and in relation to your strengths and weaknesses of your competitors. So ask yourself, are the firm's strengths enough to make up for its weaknesses when, once you've made those lists? Has the firm's strategy built on these strengths and shielded the firm from the weaknesses? Or do the firm's strengths exceed those of the rivals would be another good question along the way. So the core concept is that uh, SWOT analysis, which is widely used to diagnose as a di diagnostic tool uh, because you're able to evaluate the efficacy of a strategy and it's the basis of crafting a strategy from uh, the outside in order to determine whether a firm is positioned to pursue new market opportunities and to defend against emerging threats.